Salut tout le monde! Welcome back to Unintentionally Frenchified. So I just had my parents-in-law leave. They stayed with us for two weeks and they just left last week. Very nice to have them here. Two weeks maybe sounds like a long time for some people with their in-laws, but we were really happy to see friendly faces from friends and they were super helpful with Ele and they loved like exploring the city. They were super easy guests, so it was really great. And it was also very fun to see their culture shocks and their first impressions of Montreal and all of the things that surprised them when they got here. I would say that the phrase that a common language doesn't mean a common culture felt very true when I was like discovering Canada from their eyes because there are some things that are very similar with North America so it comes less of a culture shock for me whereas they really got like the full on like Canadian experience for the first time. So it's really fun, but I'm gonna to talk to you about the four biggest culture shocks that they experienced when they first came here for their two weeks. So if you have not subscribed to the channel, this is the time to do it. Hit the subscribe button and otherwise, say parti. Okay, so first thing, the language. The language is very different. I'm gonna be like very transparent. They had a lot of trouble understanding people, like a lot of trouble. And we know coming over, like they knew that the accent would be different. And I think everybody knows because we all encountered new accents in our, in our native language that accents can take, you know, your ears need to get used to it. It can, you know, you really need to concentrate more. It takes time to get used to an accent. They've heard the Quebec accent before, you know, in on shows or in others. So it, that wasn't as much of a surprise, but still you, you have to make an effort, right? But then on top of that, there are a lot of phrases and a lot of vocabulary words that they're not used to. And a lot of that has anglicisms in it. And a, there's a lot of English words that are dropped into Quebec when you're speaking French. And my, you take my father-in-law, for example, who doesn't hear well, really doesn't hear well, and speaks no English. So then on top of it, it's a very different accent and very different words. And like, they really struggled to understand. And I could understand this culture shock in some ways because when I moved to Scotland, I like sometimes I felt frustrated because I'm speaking my native language and the person in front of me is speaking their native language and we're technically speaking the same language, but like I'm not understanding. <laughs> and I don't know if the, like I've not been here long enough, right? To know, is it as hard for people from Quebec to understand French from France as hard as sometimes it is on the other like side? like. Do they get, I don't know, is there more of an influx of like French music and French cinema coming from France? And so therefore they're quite used to hearing that accent or, or the different vocabulary. I mean, like I'm thinking of someone like Celine Dion that's like Canadian, super well-known, sings in French. When she sings in French, like I don't hear like a really thick Quebec accent and I, I didn't like the vocabulary didn't surprise me. So I'm just wondering if this is only like when the French from France come over that it takes like time or if you also have that going the other way. I don't know, but I'm sure in the comments you guys can tell me because some of you guys must have done it the opposite way, like growing up here in Quebec and then moving to France. So I don't know, but honestly, I think that was something that really surprised them was just like the lack of not understanding, but like everyone was speaking French. Before I jump into my next point, I want to recommend Lingoda if you are looking for online language learning from anywhere in the world. They will help you dive into learning a new culture, a new accent, a new language, a new way of doing things without having to move. Lingoda is the number one online language learning school if you haven't heard of them before. And they do have classes 24 seven and they have lots of different native speaking teachers and a curriculum that goes from the very beginning all the way to the advanced. So you can really find whatever level and whatever need you have. What I love specifically about Lingoda right now is how spontaneous I can add and book classes. I used to be somebody like years ago that was very organized. I was on top of things. I probably would have booked a class like really far in advance, weeks in advance. I would have looked at all the prep material because they have so much material right at your fingertips when you book a class with them. I'm not quite like that anymore. I would say that I tend to actually book classes and I do them at night. I've usually put a late to bed and then I've got some time to myself and I book a class and I take the class, you know, the 60 minutes and then 
I tend to really take advantage of all the material that you have post-class. So that follow-up material that has like quizzes and exercises and flashcards, that tends to really help me drill in a concept after I've taken a class. Plus, you can always cater your class to not just your schedule and what works for you from home, but also to what kind of teacher you want and what their profile is and what you're looking for. I know I'm super lucky to get to learn new languages and experience new cultures and expressions and vocabulary living in that country and everybody doesn't have that opportunity. And with a school like Lingoda, you're really able to say, okay, I want to get more Quebecois expressions, more Quebecois accent, you know, learn a different form of French and find a teacher that fits that profile. All from the comfort of your own home. So Lingoda has a free seven day trial that you can actually sign up for, which is really cool. You can try it out before you commit to anything. And in the seven day free trial, you're able to either sign up for three different group classes, or you can sign up for one one-on-one -on -one private class. After the free trial, then you kind of get to decide what plan is best for you. Like, do you want more of the social plan where you're doing group classes with up to five students and your teacher, or do you want to have more of the one-on-one -on -one plan because you prefer more of the individual like language learning? So you kind of get to decide based on what you think is best. I have put everything in the YouTube description below, the link and all the information. So absolutely go check it out if you think that Lingoda could be an interesting way for you to really advance in your language learning journey. So the second culture shock was really around the friendliness of people. You know, like I'm used to walking into the States and the US and hearing someone say like, hi, how are you? But we don't really do that in France and here in Quebec, they absolutely have that. You know, you walk in and people are like, bonjour, ça va? And it was one of the very first things that they noticed. And honestly, they didn't know how to react at the beginning. They were a little surprised and then they loved it, like loved it. It's so much more informal here in French. Like even if we talk about the tu versus the vous, like we use the vous all the time in France. It's really seen as like a sign of respect. And here to have my in-laws being like, you know, they walk into store and someone's like, bonjour, comment ça va? Tu vas bien? Est-ce que je peux t'aider avec quelque chose? Like, can I help you with something with the informal you? Like, I think it was really surprising for them. And I think really fun at the end, you know, it's my like husband's parents. So obviously they're, they're older and it means that the vu is used pretty often with them because they get it because, you know, from strangers and you get it when you're showing a sign of respect. And then you also get it because when people are younger than you, they tend to vu you. So the older you get, the more you have vu. So anyways, they thought that was so fun. And of course there was also a lot of like just random, not random, but like strangers having a conversation with you, just being interested in you and talking to you. We were at like Mont Tremblant and we were doing, I'm sure you guys all know, like the very probably typical, like they pour hot maple syrup on snow and then you stick like a little, what is that? Like popsicle stick and you roll it up and then you like lick the maple syrup. Eleanor loved that. And they did it as well. And the guy next to us who was also doing it at the same time, just like started chatting to us, asking how we were, what we were there for. Oh, well, you know, I've been living uh, in Canada, you know, I grew up in Canada. This is where I'm living. And he was just kind of explaining his life and telling us like fun things to do. And I don't know, it was like a four minute conversation. And then he left, like no big deal, except that doesn't happen in France a lot. It's especially not in Paris, you know, where my in-laws have been living for like the past, you know, I actually think one of them grew up there. So anyways, long time, right? And so that was one of the things they just, at the end of their trip, when we were talking about like highs and lows and they were saying like, oh my gosh, just how friendly people are and getting to really like interact with local people. We didn't feel like isolated from them. And so I thought that was like, that was just really fun to live that through their eyes. So the third thing might not surprise you guys because I've actually talked about this, I think in one of my very first videos about just our like very first thoughts when we got to Montreal and it was the cost of food. and. You know, they might have been a bit biased because my husband's already said to them, like, you know, the cost of food, but it was something that came up quite regularly. And especially when we ordered food. So you guys, if you've watched my channel, you know that I'm a big fan of pizza. And one of the nights here, we ordered pizza from a pizza restaurant that was maybe like a 20 minute walk away. And we decided to order, order it in. And when we compared a bit with what we would have paid to order at our favorite pizza place, which these aren't like, it's not fancy. I mean, it's not Pizza Hut. Like it's definitely like a bit, maybe a bit a step up, but it's by no means like a very fancy pizza place that I'm comparing. And in Paris for four adults in our house, 
cost when we would order pizza, it would come to about 60 euros. So the pizza would be anywhere between say 10 to 15 and then you had like maybe some tip or delivery charges, but about 60 euros. And when we ordered four pizzas for four adults, the cost of the pizzas were about the same, but then there was a lot more extra charges. Like you have taxes to add on. Then you have like quite a large like delivery fee and like tip fee that you leave too. And I feel like there was the services fees maybe were higher too, but in any case, it ended up being like 110 Canadian dollars. So I don't know, you would say that's about 80 euros, 82, 83, which means it's about 30% more expensive. Um, I think, yeah, I think we shouldn't have assumed, you know, you make assumptions before you come, but Paris is a big city and buying food in Paris is already so much more expensive than the rest of France that when we move to Montreal or when someone visits maybe from Paris to Montreal, they're visiting a big city. So you would, you kind of expected prices to be similar, which you should never assume or expect, but, and it's not, um, it's a lot more expensive here. And as we're getting settled in, we've definitely found the grocery stores that are like more affordable. We have like a Provigo right by our house. Wow. I mean, it seems like a luxury grocery store in terms of, in terms of price. I feel like that would be shopping at like the Bio Monoprix, like right next to our house. So expensive. And then we found like a PA that's like, seems more affordable and that delivers. And we found like, we're as, as people like moving here, we're, we're finding ways to, you know, grocery shop that's more affordable, but I mean, everything's just more expensive baseline. It's, 25% more expensive. So interested to hear what you guys think in the comments, because this is something that surprised my in-laws, especially not just groceries, but really the ordering food or eating out. We haven't eaten out that much in restaurants yet, but that's as well, way more expensive. Okay. So this last one might be more of a random one for you guys. I don't know, but the thing that really shocked them was the ice everywhere. So for example, we went to a restaurant, we did eat out like twice and we ate out in a restaurant and we asked for a care off dough. And the woman did not like flinch whatsoever when we said we want like a pitcher of water. But what she brought back, this isn't about ice, but she brought back in like what looked like a pitcher for beer, which made me laugh. I mean, it totally functional, but it was just funny because in France, it's not quite in like a beer pitcher. They have like, you know, their special water pitchers. But anyways, we weren't in like a fancy restaurant or anything, but it came in a beer pitcher. And then she brought separate glasses with ice full to the top. Like they were brimming with ice. You you couldn't fit, you know, it's one of those glasses where you pour in a bit of water, but then you have like all the ice, a bit like when people serve you really expensive cocktails and it's like full of ice. <laughs> like, I mean, that's how the glass was. And my mother-in-law was a bit like, even when she has an option of taking ice, she says no, like she's not used to having ice. So that happened where I was like, okay, this is like very North American with the ice. But then we were staying in a hotel when we went to Mont Tremblant and I asked my mother-in-law like, where are, um, where's the trash can? I wanted to throw something away. And she turns around you guys and she hands me and she goes, it's right here. And she hands me the ice bucket and I was dying. And I was like, no, that is not the trash can. First, only people from Europe would think a trash can in North America is like this size. I do understand why she felt that way because you know, the ice buckets in hotels have like a little like mini trash bag inside of them, but still like, I mean, it didn't even occur to her that there would be an ice machine or that like, why would people need an ice bucket like in a hotel room? She was oblivious to it and we were both dying when I explained. So I think all of these little like instances with ice, um, the fact that our refrigerator has an ice machine and I was like, oh, would you like ice in your water? It's just like not something that people do um, in Europe. And so it was something she noticed a lot when she was here and commented a couple of times. Okay. So that's a wrap on the things that they were the most surprised about the four things. I have a lot of things, honestly, that they made comments about. They were surprised that maybe wouldn't be something that would shock me because I grew up in North America, but for them was really different. So let me know if you liked the video in the comments and I will totally do a second version of this one. Um, don't forget about Lingoda. If you guys are interested in language learning, if you think, you know, the seven day trial, what do you have to lose? Sign up. I put everything in the YouTube description below. And otherwise I will see everybody next week. La semaine prochaine. Lots of bisous.